Hello there, my name is Marco, I live in Argentina, a third world country with one of the worst economies worldwide. Looking forward to making money, I started being a game developer for the past 4 years. Today I want to share with you the exact path I will follow if I had to start over. So basically I will be summarizing over 4 years of learning in just one video, so the value you will get out of this will be huge. Let's explore together how you can learn game development from complete scratch and be successful. 1. Less courses, more practice. There is a common belief that uh, more courses, the better. The more courses that you can take, it will benefit you more. However, uh, in spite of this being true, in, in some way, in the fact that, of course, the more courses that you take, the more knowledge you can gain. Uh, the the actual is that the more real practice the better will be because if you have taken a lot of courses but you haven't actually showcased what you have learned uh in different projects it will be basically worthless because how can people actually know if you can apply those knowledges in um games that does that that is actually the most important part because in game development it doesn't really matter if you have a lot of uh, theories and ideas in your mind that you have due to the fact that you have taken lots of courses but what is actually useful is that you have actually created something useful something dynamic something that people can look at um when you are referring for the courses so start just looking at courses as a tool that will allow you to create better games but don't look at them as something that you have to take in order to get a job as you can see, the difference is quite huge. Then what you can do is to create as many projects as possible with the knowledge you gain for every course you finish. Basically, for example, you have taken a course about physics, then create a physics game. If you have just finished the course about, I don't know, how to create the best player movement, okay, then create a game that is everything based in some specific player movement. Finally, you have to make sure that you are spending more time practicing than taking courses, okay? So basically, this will allow you to uh, realize, uh, to make sure actually that you are spending more time creating games that will actually help you get that job and will actually help, uh, help you be more successful than just taking a lot of courses. Two, stop creating assets. In order to have the most time available possible, in order not only to um, study game development, to take courses, whatever, but also to create some projects, you have to stop creating assets. I understand that as game developers, we always want to make our games as unique as possible, and maybe using assets from some online platforms may seem like a bad idea because we are using somebody else's work in order to benefit ourselves. However, let me tell you that when we are learning game development, what we firstly want to focus in is that we are able to create different type of games in spite of the assets, okay? And then if we have an advanced uh, game development knowledge, then we may uh, have the time and we should actually take the time to create our own assets, okay? This doesn't mean that you have to become a designer, but basically you should know how to use some 2D drawing tools, you should know how to draw some pretty basic shapes, maybe how to do some pixel art. Because yes, this will make you a better developer because you will understand some things also, you know, how do colors match, how are animation frames made, etc. So it's actually knowledge that will be useful. But what you don't have to uh, be focusing in is in creating your own assets for all the games that you create. Nowadays, there are a lot of online platforms that will allow you to save a lot of time in creating your own assets. If you want to create your own assets, there are a bunch of AI platforms that will help you. Or directly, there are a lot of online platforms that have already created a lot of free of use assets that you can use for literally any game. Finally, what you also have to consider is the fact that usually game developers do not create game assets when it comes to a, a job. Because if you are working at a company, for example, if you are a game developer, you will directly receive the assets from the corresponding person that dedicates completely to creating assets. So it's going to be a little bit worthless. So again, I believe that the, the point here is that the first step that you have to make is to be able to understand and to be able to create different games, okay? And do not focus anything on creating assets okay and then when you do have a pretty basic understanding about how games are made then you can start to create some pretty basic assets i would even recommend to create just pixel art 
start creating some animations, create different art styles, but this has to be something pretty quick. You can't just have uh, a, one prototype that you created completely yourself, not only the code, but also the assets, something that you can create in maybe seven, 10 days, no more than that. And with that, it will be enough so that you can um, continue on your game dev journey. Three, focus on core gameplay, okay? So this point is quite related to the previous point about do not create assets, focus more on other things about learning and creating your games. But here specifically what I want to talk about is that uh, sometimes when we are creating games, we want to add as many features as possible, we want to add as many collectible items as we can, uh, we want to make the shop make amazingly good and add a bunch of items, but that isn't, that isn't actually gonna be defining if our game is successful or not. I mean, it's not gonna be have a direct impact on that. What is uh, actually gonna have an impact on if our game is successful or not is our core gameplay. Basically, for example, if we are creating a game that's literally the same thing as, I don't know, any mobile game out there, for example, a clicker game, probably it's gonna be quite difficult for us um, to make that game successful why because the core gameplay will always be the exact same thing just clicking on an object and there will be something that we will be able to bot um etc but the core gameplay will mostly be the same thing so we really have to take a look at games that we can in a way tweak or change completely the core gameplay this doesn't necessarily mean uh reinventing the wheel you don't really have to change in 100 percent the core gameplay but what you have to do is to include some other new features that's in other games that aren't, or on the other hand, instead of creating something completely new, what you can do and what actually companies do is that they merge some existing mechanics. For example, you have game one and game two that are amazing. So you create game three that is a combination of game one and game two's core gameplay. So there you have a brand new product that may seem as, a, as an innovation, but it's actually that you're just taking two existing and working mechanics and you're combining it in the same project. And then also, besides of just merging mechanics, you have to uh, twist some things, include some twists that will actually make your game stand out from the crowd. So here you will also be learning not only game development, but also how to market your own games. And that will have a direct impact on your own profile, because if you're able to innovate, let's say, with new projects that actually have a strong core gameplay, you will have much more possibilities of succeeding. So here the important thing is that details that these are basically things that are outside of the core gameplay are not actually purely influential in the game's success. So spend less time in this kind of details and focus the most that you can in just the core gameplay. And once the core gameplay is completely finished, of course, take some time to add some tiny features and details, but do not spend a complete month, complete weeks just adding details and secondary mechanics because they aren't going to actually make the difference. Or publish a lot of games when it comes to learning as I, I was telling you in the previous point you have to learn something create something learn create learn create okay that's the cycle that you have to get into you can't really expect to be successful in game development if you are publishing I don't know in an year you only publish three four five games at least I would tell you to publish one monthly game and then I believe that two games monthly would be the ideal of course, this is the case if what your target audience, let's say, is just mobile games that are simple, hyper casual, hybrid casual, casual, etc. games that can perfectly be built in a matter of weeks or even days. Because this will allow you to experiment with different core gameplays, actually find what you are best at and start recreating that in the different games that you create. Also, if you actually have a portfolio with hundreds of games, but not only games that are there uploaded somewhere, no, but I mean games that actually have a strong core gameplay and the details aren't actually like super polished, but there are there is a strong core gameplay and some details that add a twist or something to the game. That is a game that is actually marketable and is actually worth showcasing in your portfolio, in your CV, literally everywhere. So again, you have to publish as most as most games as you can on a monthly basis, making sure that the core gameplay is as strong as possible, and also making sure that you are not spending more time than necessary in the details of the game because they won't have 
a lot of influence in the game success and where you can publish all these games if you can i would really recommend you to create a google play developer account and for an amount of, of something like 25 dollars you will be able to publish as many games as you can you have no other fees that you have to pay licenses or whatever just a one single payment so that is amazing and it's super cheap and there you will actually start building also let's say your company at the google play store but if you have literally no budget for that you can start publishing in free in free platforms such as each.io so this is all for today's video i hope that this video has been helpful for you if it was please consider subscribing to the channel so that i know that you enjoy this type of content and i will upload more and therefore more people will be helped i hope we can see each other on the next video and have an amazing day bye bye